After a jam-packed day at the south and north rims of Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, including an intense climb up and down the Gunnison Route, we've headed back to the San Juan Mountains for one last weekend. The San Juan Mountains have completely stolen our hearts with their epic mountain views, cool mining towns, off-roading trails, and history. And for our final adventure in the San Juan Mountains, we're going to explore a little bit of Telluride and hike one of the top trails on our Colorado hiking bucket list. We originally didn't have time to come to Telluride, so we weren't planning on visiting, but it came highly recommended to us from many of you guys. So after a change of plans and moving some stuff around, we had some time to visit, so we decided to come and check it out. Telluride is located in the San Juan Mountains and is tucked into a box canyon surrounded by 13,000 and 14,000 foot peaks. Similar to Ure, Telluride was a summer destination for Ute Native Americans who called the area Valley of Hanging Waterfalls. By the mid-1870s, fortune seekers began flooding the San Juan Mountains looking for gold and silver and the area was called Columbia before changing its name to Telluride in 1878. In 1890, the railroad came to the area and the town started to flourish and the population grew to around 5,000. But between the silver prices collapsing in 1893 and World War I after that, many people left the town and the population dwindled to the hundreds. Telluride reinvented itself in the 1970s with another legendary powder as the focal point, white powder snow. The Telluride Ski Resort opened in 1972 and the character of the town began to change. Today, Telluride is one of five communities in Colorado to be listed as a National Historic Landmark District, and the town is known for music and film festivals, including the Bluegrass Festival happening this weekend, cultural events, and tons of outdoor recreation year-round. It is an absolutely beautiful town and we love it here so much and we're already really sad that we don't have more time to spend here. Compared to the other mining towns we visited like Silverton and Ure, Telluride definitely feels a lot larger and it feels more upscale and trendier and has a lot more amenities but it still just has a ton of charm. We just made a quick coffee run to a super neat coffee shop called Ghost Town. It's tucked in between two buildings. It's like part coffee shop, part cafe, part grocer, and everything they make is either made in-house or sourced locally. And another cool thing is all the ingredients they use for their food items, they also sell. It's one of the coolest coffee shops we've been to in a while. We got a caramel latte and a maple latte, both are delicious delicious <laughs> and we're taking them to go and we're walking to what we think is one of the most shocking things that Telluride offers especially being in kind of a touristy ski town a free gondola The gondola connects Telluride with Mountain Village and it's the first and only gondola offering free public transportation in the United States. It's been open since December 20th, 1996 and instead of an 8 mile 20 minute drive to Mountain Village is a 3 mile 13 minute ride up to the top. It carries an average of 900 riders per hour or 2.8 million per year. <laughs> It was originally created to improve the air quality in town and it would take 20, 50 passenger buses to be able to replace the amount of people that the gondola can get up the mountain in an hour. And the gondola is dog friendly, so you can bring your fr furry friends with you. <laughs> but unfortunately, we weren't sure how busy it would be and Kona doesn't do well in confined spaces with strangers, so she's sitting this one out. <laughs> Oh, whoa! It smells like a speed gondola. Oh, Jeez. 
Wow. Oh, oh man, this takes me back to Europe, man. In uh. Oh, uh, Sacchetta in Italy. Uh, oh, uh, the memories. So the first stop you can get off at is San Sofia Station. It's up on top of the hill here overlooking Telluride. It's supposed to have some gorgeous views of Telluride looking down. And a little bit of a, looks like we're on a, a little walking trail here. So we're just gonna walk around and check it out. Just like Ure was nicknamed the Switzerland of America, this area is giving me these European vibes too with the, the gondola ride up here and then you've got trails on top up here that you can walk around and all the ski lifts and everything and amazing mountain and valley views. From the San Sofia station, we took the next leg of the free gondola ride to the Mountain Village area. There's actually another leg you can take to the other side of Mountain Village, but it looked a little more happening here, so we're gonna check it out and end our ride here. We are getting major flashbacks to our time at Whistler. It just, it's definitely more of a resort vibe up here. It has a different vibe than down in Telluride, but it's so just crazy to me that you could stay in one or the other and then just gondola back and forth. And I can tell you right now, we are a thousand percent coming For back sure. here. We're, maybe so when we learn cool. to ski or mountain bike or something, because this just feels like the ultimate vacation spot. <laughs> And back down we go. Zoom! <laughs> it takes off so fast. We made it back to town and next up we're gonna hike to the tallest free falling waterfall in Colorado at 365 feet, Bridal Veil Falls. We're pulling up to the Bridal Veil Falls parking. And just as our fears, uh, our fears are confirmed, it is uh, fully booked, the parking lot's and there's some parking on the side of the road here that I think we're gonna try to snag. It doesn't say no parking, so we're just gonna hope that we don't come back to a ticket. <laughs> There 
are two different ways to do this hike. You can either take the trail to the falls or take Black Bear Pass Road, which is a four by four road. So you will be sharing it with vehicles. We hear that going the road is the easier way, but we're gonna do the trail there and then I think take the road back. The trail is a beautiful trail. You're just winding through the woods here, up and down. But don't get me wrong, it is not a leisurely stroll. It's uh, rocky, hilly, lots of climbs, one little water crossing. Loads of fun though. We just about made it to the base of Bridal Veil Falls. We can already tell it's gonna be a really misty one. This waterfall yeah. is insane. It's like a huge cloud of mist. Woo, woo, it's cool. You can barely even see the waterfall. It's so misty and the <laughs> lights hitting it. It's yeah. gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> It was impossible to keep anything dry, even so many feet from that waterfall. That was probably the most misty waterfall we've ever been to. I'm still completely yeah. soaked. If you're a photographer or doing stuff like us, maybe bring a little towel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> videos back when we were on the million dollar highway we stopped at the Red Mountain Pass and there's the Idorado mine that goes from there to Telluride pretty sure this is where you come out that is just nuts top of the falls there is a hydroelectric plant that was built in 1904 that would take water from Blue Lake and from the waterfall here and use it for the smuggler union mine down below there was also an aerial tramway build which you can see some of the cabling here and you can see a lot of it on the trail up here that would take uh, workers and a lot of supplies back and forth up up here to the mines We are headed back down to the van and like we said at the beginning of the hike there's two ways to go you can go the trail or you can take the road we suggest going both ways so that you can see different scenery each way So our plan was to get lunch at a spot called Tacos Del Nar in Telluride, but with the festival going on, it's just a bit crazy busy down there and parking this huge van would be a little bit of a struggle. So unfortunately, we are leaving Telluride, which we're so sad about because it, I think we both agree, it's our favorite place we've been to in Colorado. It is just gorgeous here. So we're 1000% coming back. But lucky for us, Tacos Del Nar has another location in a town called Ridgeway, which is about 50 minutes northeast of here. And it's close to where we're hiking tomorrow. So it works out perfectly. We did something we never do. We both got one, I said it, one taco each. 
who are we? I don't <laughs> even know who I am. But anyways, it's a good one. I got a pork belly taco. I think it's grilled pork belly. And then there's all kinds of veggies on here. Tomato, heirloom tomatoes, onions. There's some rocket lettuce under there. My mouth is watering, I'm sorry. There's a balsamic redux and a uh, mustard aioli sprinkled all through there. Oh, this taco is bursting, absolutely bursting with flavor, man. It is so good. They have some very unique uh, combinations in there. Some, some, some stuff I've never even heard of. I think that's kind of what they're known for is unique combinations. And this one is not a letdown on that. That pork belly is so smoky, so much grill flavor in there. And then the two sauces that are in it, oh man, they're just kind of tangy and sweet and they go perfectly with the smoke and the veggies are so fresh. Ah oh, man, I'm, I'm bummed I only got one, but <laughs> this is what happened. But it is so dang, I'm gonna savor this taco. And I got a taco called the Drippy Mitch, which is very, very messy looking, but it looks so good. So it's chorizo, tater tots. I love tater tots. Queso, some cabbage. I'm not really sure what else. I got it on corn tortillas. They gave me three, which is probably good to hold it all together. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. There's no, there's no ladylike polite way to eat this. So I'm just gonna go for it. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty gnarly. It is, like Adam said, bursting with flavor. The chorizo is seasoned so well, and then you get that creaminess of the queso, and then just like that nice kind of softness of the tater tots. Oh, yeah. This place, it kind of reminds us a little bit of Torchy's Tacos in Texas, and I guess they have those in Denver and other places now too, which is like really unique combinations, and it's fun to try something that you've never had before, but I love chorizo, I love tater tots, and I love queso, and this taco, it was made for me. <laughs> Tacos have been demolished, and I'm with Adam. I so wish we had gotten more than one taco, but there's this darn thing called a budget that ruined all the fun, but we're actually gonna hang out here in Ridgeway for the rest of the day and just get some work done, and then tomorrow we're gonna do probably the number one hike we wanted to do while here in Colorado, and the whole reason we came back to the San Juan Mountains, Blue Lake. Blue Lakes is probably one of the most popular hikes here in the San Juan Mountains. It's a trail that takes you to three gorgeous lakes, one of which is Gatorade Blue. It's about 8.6 miles round trip, 2,500 feet of elevation gain. I'm already feeling it. I think we're starting at like 9,000 feet. We were supposed to do this hike last weekend, but there was still a good amount of snow and you couldn't really make it to the upper lakes. So we're hoping that we can make it all the way this time, but if not, we'll just go as far as we can go. We're about a mile in and we just made it up the first big elevation, but looks like we got a lot more coming up. Not gonna lie, this is pretty hard. <laughs> I think we're getting really close to the lake. I'm starting to see the, like the mountains that backdrop the, uh, you know, behind the first lake that I've seen in the pictures. But man, the hike has been tough, but gorgeous. You just keep climbing and climbing. And as you look back, you can see the layers of the mountains and the land behind you. It's been pretty beautiful. We made, it we made it to the first lake. This is the one that's supposed to be Gatorade blue, but because the sun hasn't come up yet, it doesn't have that color yet. But it will by the time 
we do all the other lakes and come back we promise but... well we might hang out here and have a little bite and yeah. by the time we're done who knows the sun might be here because it's just going to come over the over this peak just to the side of us here but still epic backdrop oh my, oh my. these goodness. mountains are ridiculous yeah. We could sit here all day and just have a nice little picnic and enjoy the views, but we're gonna head up to the other two lakes now. We hear that the best view of the hike is actually on the way to lake number two, looking down onto this lake right here. A little tricky to get to the rest of the trail. You gotta cross the drainage from this, uh, the blue lake, I guess, and. There's no easy way to get it. You just gotta go for it. And it is dang cold. Ice cold. Yeah. And the, the way you're supposed to go was just too rushing and we didn't feel comfortable crossing it. Yeah. So we went closer to the lake and kind of went through where some people are camping. And it was definitely easier, but yeah, ice cold. <laughs> place even real this is just crazy we always say that glaciers most beautiful place we've been to in the US but this is rival or rival rivalry I can, you know what I mean this is just unreal We made it to lake number three, the final lake on this hike. And while the first lake has more of that milky blue color, I would say lake number three has the best mountain views. It, the mountains are so jagged. This is for sure the number one hike we've done since being back on the road in March, 2021. That was the perfect end to our time here in the San Juan Mountains. We cannot put into words how much we love it here. I've never looked at real estate 
and land that we could build our tiny house on so much there's just something about this place it's just magical and breathtakingly gorgeous and we're so sad to leave so <laughs> sad to leave but there are other parts of colorado we want to explore but we're now going to head four hours northeast to the town of leadville we're going to rest up get ready get acclimated because we are going to conquer mount elbert which is not only a 14er our first 14er but the highest point in colorado oh god <laughs> <laughs> It is tucked into a box canyon surrounded by 13,000 and 14,000 foot peak. <laughs> I forgot that you'll hear me laughing if I put that in. Yeah. Okay, ready? We just made a quick coffee run to a super vibey. <laughs> can't say it with a straight face. It's okay. That was embarrassing. What happened? <laughs> I like stood up and hit my head. Oh, you hit your head? Yeah. Ow! <laughs> yeah. yeah. That did not feel good. I'm obsessed with every single house here. They're all so beautiful. If someone would like to give us like, I don't know, like five million dollars maybe, let us know. We'll let you visit. <laughs> Soldier boy.